Hello students. So today we are going to talk about one of the software relationship management techniques, Kairetsu. So this Kairetsu, the word emerged or the origin of the Kairetsu is from Japan. So at the end of today's lecture, you should be able to explain what is Kairetsu and you should know the history of Kairetsu and you should have an understanding as to what are the companies that are practicing this Kairetsu concept and what are the advantages and disadvantages of Kairetsu. So what is Kairetsu? Kairetsu is a Japanese term, as I told you before, it is the origin is in Japan. So it's a Japanese term referring to a business network made up of different companies that have close relationships and sometimes take small equity stakes in each other, all the while remaining operationally independent. So in Kairetsu, what's happening is that it's like a conglomerate. So the conglomerate, maybe when it comes to the conglomerate, when it comes to the business network, suppose that there are companies A, B, C, and D. So A might be having uh, equity, a small equity stake in company B. B might be having a small equity stake in company C. Likewise, it would be seen in some of the business networks when it comes to Kairetsu and also it's not essential for the companies to have a small equity stake in the other company in order to become a Kairetsu business network but in most of the Kairetsu business networks they do have a small equity stake in each other so when 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 it's a Kairetsu business network when it's Kairetsu a Kairetsu group of companies they work closely to each other so the relationship that they share is a very unique one it's a very close relationship so this way of doing business rose to the prominence after World War II and the destruction of the Japanese Zaibetsu. So before World War II in Japan, they had this practice called Zaibetsu. So since this is a Japanese originated word, Kairetsu, before the Second World War happened, before the Second World War uh, had happened, what was commonly seen in the Japanese economy was Saibetsu. So Saibetsu is simply means that most of the companies that were there in Japan before the uh, were Second World War has been family owned and family run businesses. So maybe a company which is of large scale. So those companies were run by, they were family based they they were owned by families and also uh, they were run by the families and later on after us entered into japan they they destroyed this particular they took steps to destroy this particular saibetsu concept in the japanese economy but later on this saibetsu concept was re-emerged as kairetsu so the essence of Saibetsu is also there in Kairetsu concept as well. So here, the, the only difference in the Kairetsu concept other than Saibetsu is that this Kairetsu is also most of the time they are also family owned. But when it comes to Saibetsu, it was family owned and family run businesses. Whereas in Kairetsu, they would be family owned, but they are run by professionals. So that is the key difference between Saibetsu and Kairetsu. So since it's a group of companies, it's a network, so they share a sense of group identity. So there is a group identity when it comes to Kairetsu companies. For example, this Mitsubishi is said to be one of the most prominent Kairetsus that is there in Japan. So what happened in uh, Japan in uh, several years back was there when it comes to Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi cars, their car sales were dropped. So one of the key, one of the key uh, characteristics in Kairetsu is that 
in their group of companies they have the financial institution also at the middle there is a financial institution like bank which for which funds which helps with the funds of the other companies that are there in their uh, mitsubishi kairetsu so when there was a drop in their sales figure of mitsubishi car sales what they have told they have uh, go, they have gone to mitsubishi bank the financial institution and they have told them that there is a they are struggling bit of uh, since there is a bit of drop in their sales so as a, as a solution what the group of companies what this business network has done in order to help mitsubishi cars mitsubishi car company was that um, they have purchased they were instructed to purchase cars from this mitsubishi company so that their sales figure gradually had a increment there was a uh, increase in the sales figure since they have used this particular strategy in their kairetsu so here a horizontal kairetsu is an alliance of different companies led by a bank and vertical kairetsu refers to manufacturers suppliers and distributors partnering up to cut cost and become more so when we talk about kairetsu there are two types of kairetsu as horizontal kairetsu and vertical kairetsu so if it is a horizontal kairetsu that was the most prominent one in the past but now 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 on now a days what is most prominent is vertical kairetsu so what is what was happening in horizontal kairetsu was that a horizontal kairetsu is characterized by an alliance of different companies from various sectors so in horizontal kairetsu there has been companies from different different sectors for example if you talk about mitsubishi mitsubishi is an example of horizontal kairetsu where they had this uh, mitsubishi mitsubishi electric mitsubishi heavy industries and mufg bank mitsubishi bank so likewise there has been lot of companies in the kairetsu horizontal kairetsu representing different different sectors so this particular uh, group of companies in the horizontal kairetsu included a bank also that is the special characteristic so the horizontal kairetsu had a bank also included in the kairetsu so the bank has been the centerpiece of the network so in order to keep this it has been the glue glue stick which kept all the companies together the bank is the centerpiece of the network and is responsible for providing the others with financial services so uh, when it comes to horizontal kairetsu the bank that is placed at the center has been the responsible party in order to provide the other companies which represent the other sectors in the kairetsu with the financial services so that is the main key characteristic of horizontal kairetsu and when we talk about the vertical kairetsu that is most commonly seen in nowadays so in a vertical kairetsu vertical kairetsu is referred to manufacturers suppliers and distributors partnering up so it's more like in can you all remember the vertical integration so in, if we are talking about vertical kairetsu we have we don't have different different companies from different different sectors but in vertical kairetsu we would be having manufacturers suppliers and distributors partnering up so it would be uh, it would allow us to have a smooth flow in our supply chain so this partnering up of manufacturers suppliers and distributors has to be having a common goal and they have to they would be working together in order to cut cost and become more efficient for for example one of the most uh, prominent example that can be given for vertical kairetsu is toyota so most of the automo automotive companies are following this vertical kairetsu so here uh, as practiced by toyota uh, when it comes to vertical kairetsu the new uh, kairetsu the new vertical kairetsu it breaks from traditional kairetsu in four ways so 
instead of so you there is a certain document uploaded in the course web regarding it's a it's a Harvard Business Review article. So when you read the article, you would understand as to why we say that this uh, Toyota has the vertical kairetsu and the vertical kairetsu that they are having today is different from the traditional vertical kairetsu. So you can read it and understand. And here, so now by now we have discussed as to what is a kairetsu. Uh, so how is saibetsu different from kairetsu we have discussed. So there are two types of kairetsus. We have vertical kairetsus and horizontal kairetsus. We have discussed some examples as well. So now we'll look at the history of kairetsu. So powerful families known as saibetsus, we have discussed what was a saibetsu, once ran the majority of Japan's major industries. So before the Second World War, when it comes to Japanese economy, the majority of the Japanese industries were run by the saibetsus. So after Second World War, when United States entered into Japan, they busted up all these saibetsu structure form of major industries that were there in Japan. So saibetsu was more of, they were more like the monopolistic and undemocratic reportedly buying politicians in exchange for contracts and using pricing mechanism and exploited the poor. So the reason why United States came and busted up these structures was because they were more of, the saibutsus were more of monopolistic in structure. So that is the reason they have busted out these uh, saibutsus uh, structures. But later on after the Second World War, it's, it was more like the pieces of mercury is coming in together. Even though United States came and busted up the uh, saibetsus, later on with time, they realized that rather than having operated independently, it's more efficient and effective for them to work together. So it was more like the mercury, the pieces of mercury that were there, the pieces of saibetsus that were there, came together and but now in the kairetsu the culture they have a most of the companies are family owned but they are run by the professional so that is the difference so it was more like after the second world war it was more like the mercury pieces coming together and creating the conglomerate again i hope it's understood so here I have given an example of Kairetsu. This is regarding Mitsubishi. So it's it's more of a, they have more of a horizontal Kairetsu. So Mitsubishi is the driving force behind perhaps the largest and best known Japanese horizontal Kairetsu. The bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi sits at the top of the Kairetsu. So I told you when it comes to horizontal Kairetsu, one of the key, uh, key characteristics in horizontal kairetsu is that in their group of companies they have a bank so here they have tokyo mitsubishi bank sitting at the top of the kairetsu which provides financial services to other companies in the kairetsu mitsubishi motors and mitsubishi trust and banking are also of the Core group followed by Meiji Mutual Life Insurance Company, which provides insurance to all members. Mitsubishi Shoji is the trading company for the Mitsubishi Kairetsu. So I told you when it comes to horizontal Kairetsu, you would be having companies from different different sectors. So when it comes to Mitsubishi Kairetsu, they have these insurance companies, Mitsubishi Shoji, the trading company for Mitsubishi Kairetsu and uh, mutual life Meiji mutual life insurance company and Mitsubishi trust and banking and Mitsubishi motors likewise there are a lot of companies in their kairetsu uh, from representing different different sectors so together they aim to help each other distribute goods all over the world so by having this cluster what they do is that they help each other in the distribution of their goods and the other services all over the world. 
So they may seek new markets for Kairetsu companies, help incorporate Kairetsu companies in other nations, and sign contracts with other companies around the globe to supply commodities used for Japanese industries. So by having these Kairetsu, they help the other nations as well as they help their own nation, Japan, in order to supply the commodities that are used in the uh, in the other Japanese industries. As you might have already noticed, many companies within this Kairetsu have Mitsubishi as part of their name. So one of the uh, one of the criteria that is available for you to identify whether this particular company belongs to a particular Kairetsu is that they would be using a common name. So may it be a bank, the bank of Kairetsu Mitsubishi is named as Mitsubishi Trust and Banking. So if, if it is the uh, uh, automotive um, industry, it's Mitsubishi Motors. So if it is insurance, it's Meiji Mutual Life Insurance Company. So they had this Mitsubishi uh, as part of their name. So by looking at the name of the company, you, in Japan, you can identify whether the particular company is uh, is a uh, Kairetsu or not by looking at the name of the company. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of Kairetsus? The advantages would be since it's a network, since they are working closely to each other, they can bring a lot of benefits. For example, companies in the Kairetsu can leverage each other's expertise to become stronger and better. So since there are, when it comes to horizontal Kairetsu, there would be companies from representing different, different sectors, which means their expertise are different so that they can bring all the expertise together and they can be competing. Uh, they can be a good competent to their other competitors because they have different expertise coming from different backgrounds. So they are more strong. And another advantage would be forming an alliance also limits the threat of competition and makes it more difficult for its members to be subject to take over attempts by outsiders. So when they are in a Kairetsu, it's difficult for another company to come and acquire them because they are very strong in the competition. For another, another advantage is that before also, I have explained you when the sales of Mitsubishi Motors drop, a strategy they have used is that they have asked the other companies in the uh, Kairetsu, the professionals working in the other companies in the Kairetsu, Mitsubishi Kairetsu to purchase a uh, motor, motor vehicle from Mitsubishi Motor so that their sales would increase. So that would be another advantage. So they can help each other in order to become better. So what are the disadvantages of this Kairetsu? Their large size makes it difficult for Kairetsu to adjust quickly to market changes and the limited competition leads to inefficient practices. So since they are very strong as a group of companies, since they are very strong as a Kairetsu, they would feel that they are the strongest in the competition. So since they 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 feel that they are the strongest, the practices that would be there would become inefficient because since there are no other competition for them, they would be a little bit, uh, bit of lazy to work in an efficient manner. And also since the, when it comes to Kairetsu, since there are a lot of companies from very different backgrounds, uh, if there is a technological advancement, a breakout of a technological advancement, getting the particular technical technological advancement in all the Kairetsu group of companies would be a little difficult since it's since the number of companies are large in number. So easy access to capital, since they have easy access to capital, since they have a bank, uh, their own bank in their group of companies. Having close relationship with a bank might encourage a company to embark in a risky debt forward strategies that an outside institution would probably never help to finance. So since they have a very close relationship, their own Kairatsu company, there would be a little risk associated with being debt fuel strategies, having debt fuel strategies, because it's not like having going and having a uh, asking for a loan from an 
outside financial institution when you have a financial institution inside the kairetsu the relationship is very close so that they would tend to give a particular loan without having considered much so the risk is high so that's about kairetsu so uh, today we have discussed about what is a kairetsu what is the history of kairetsu what are the practical examples of kairetsu so we have discussed um, in detail about mitsubishi as a kairetsu but i recommend for you to read a lot read more read the additional readings that are that i have made available in the course with so you need to have more practical examples of kairetsus and we have also discussed about what are the advantages and disadvantages of kairetsus so this is one of the supplier relationship management techniques that the companies can use in order to uh, have better financial performance okay so with that note i'll end the today's video thank you thank you for listening